Good morning. I'm Jim Everson, President of the Canola Council of Canada. Welcome to Canola Week and to today's Canola Industry Meeting. This morning, we're setting the table for three days of discussions that will have a big impact on the future of the canola sector. Each year, this event brings together the canola sector with a focus on innovation. The Canola Council's Discovery Forum tomorrow will look more deeply into the latest science and innovation underpinning the competitiveness and sustainability of our industry. It's hard to overstate the importance of your work as researchers, agronomists, and scientists. Canola, quite simply, is all about innovation. And what an industry we have. Today, canola contributes nearly 30 billion annually to the Canadian economy, including more than 207,000 Canadian jobs. That contribution increased by 35% over the last decade alone. Canola itself is a product of Canadian innovation and the competitiveness of our industry, the record of growth since the 70s, is a story of continued innovation. How many industries can you name where the main product was invented by Canadians, is the most valuable product in its class, and where Canada leads the world in production and trade? We cannot overvalue or overstate the importance of research and innovation in driving our industry forward. Let me begin by considering the state of the canola sector today and opportunities and challenges ahead. First and foremost, what a challenging production year 2021 was. Growers dealt with a prairie-wide drought that significantly impacted yields and has led to a reduction in sales to export markets. But our sector has been through this before. In 2002 and again in 2012, we experienced production downturns due to climatic extremes across the prairies. In both circumstances, the crop rebounded both in terms of production and oil content. This coming year, there is an additional challenge. The, reco the recovery may be hampered to some extent by pandemic related supply chain challenges. Obviously, no one has a crystal ball. We will need to monitor conditions closely, but we hope for a strong recovery in 2022. Looking at today's business climate, the word that comes to mind is unpredictable. The global trade environment is buffeted by many challenges. Recovery from the global pandemic is uneven and disrupted by a tremendous, a tenacious virus and related supply chain challenges. The trade disruption with canola seed to China continues. And global efforts to mitigate climate change are altering the commercial environment with taxes and regulation. But the fundamentals of global demand are in our favor. The world's growing middle class is continuing to seek out healthier food products like canola oil and canola protein. Palm oil has slowed as the industry has been challenged by sustainability concerns. And there's a growing demand in new areas, including aquaculture and protein for human food ingredients. Most significantly, as part of the global effort to address climate change, more countries are introducing renewable fuel mandates to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Canada and the United States are among them. This is a huge opportunity for our, our industry because canola oil is one of the best feedstocks available for renewable fuels. This graph shows how much North American demand for canola is expected to increase if we can establish a firm foothold in this market. The Canola Council is very active in discussions with the Government of Canada as work is done to finalize the clean fuel regulations which we anticipate will be in place by the end of 2022. And if done properly, the standard will drive new demand for canola. The impact of these two factors, high demand for Canada's sustainably produced healthy oil for food use and low carbon emission canola for diesel fuel are driving investment and growth in our industry. By 2025, Canada will be able to process 50% more canola seed than today thanks to more than $2 billion in capital investment announced by our canola processors. These expansions will create a steady source of canola demand for surrounding farmers, plus good, reliable jobs for thousands of Canadians. So in short, while we're charting a course through a very unpredictable period, the long-term demand signal for canola is strong. Together, we're reinforcing canola's reputation as a healthy cooking oil, 
high quality protein and excellent feedstock for clean renewable fuels, all derived from a crop that is sustainably grown by highly experienced farmers. With all this opportunity before us, one of the biggest challenges facing our industry is simply growing more canola to keep up with demand. Today, this week, we need to focus our collective efforts on growing the supply of canola in a sustainable, profitable way. I expect everyone here is aware of the industry's strategic target of increasing the, prof the productivity of every canola acre. We're aiming to achieve average yields of 52 bushels per acre to meet global demand of 26 metric tons of production by 2025. So meeting our yield targets is job number one. To get there, growers will need continued advancement in agronomic practices, as well as access to new tools like higher yielding cultivars, smart fertilizers, and a wide range of resistance to disease, extreme weather, and pod shatter. These improvements will be driven by innovation and by you, the people who are taking part in these Canola Week discussions. We know through experience that the canola value chain is a powerful force for positive change. Another key objective is responding to the growing calls for enhanced sustainability and greenhouse gas emission reduction. When considering the challenges ahead and the priorities for research, there is no doubt that addressing climate change and environmental aspects of production will be high on the agenda. From the expression of global commitments evident in the recent Glasgow COP26 meetings, to the domestic biofuels agenda, to the recent Guelph statement of federal provincial territorial agriculture ministers, climate change and the environment will be a critical lens through which research priorities and funding will be considered. So how is our sector tackling the climate change and sustainability challenge? Well, let's start by recognizing that the canola sector is a solution provider when it comes to the environment. Canola takes carbon from the atmosphere and uses it to make food. It turns carbon into oil and protein for food and fuel. As it grows, it takes carbon from the atmosphere and sequesters it in the soil. As our industry increases production intensification to meet our goal of 52 bushels an acre, we will sequester an additional 5 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions in the soil each year. Used in renewable fuels production, canola can reduce GHG emissions by up to 90% relative to traditional petroleum-based diesel fuel, which is why canola demand will increase with government policy to mitigate climate change. So the crop itself is a solution. Second, let's recognize that the Canadian grain farmer have, a, have and are contributing to production sustainability each day, each and every production season. Growers care deeply about their stewardship of, the mo of their most valuable resource, which is the land. We need to focus on providing the science-based knowledge and discovery to support them. I hear a lot about ESG these days, environmental social governance. Well, for me, the grower was committed to ESG well before it became a thing. The grower have been quick to adopt technology that improves environmental outcomes from no-till to pod shatter resistance. Growers are invested in passing their operations on through their family and aim to improve the productive capacity of the land for their children. In the social realm, Rural communities draw their energy from growers who populate school boards, coach hockey, and employ thousands of Canadians. So the canola grower too is a solution provider. Sustainability is a journey, not a destination. And it's a journey that should be characterized by transparency, measurement, and continuous improvement principles, which align well with canola's focus on innovation. So the real question is how do we as an industry continue to provide innovative products and practices to the grower and the whole value chain which meet our goals for increased production to meet global demand while ensuring sustainability and reduced emissions. As with all big investments in canola or advancements in canola investments in innovation and research will again be the answer. Earlier this month, federal provincial agriculture ministers released the Guelph Statement 
setting out priorities as they discuss the next five year agriculture policy framework. Included among those priorities are taking climate change, tackling climate change and environmental protection to support GHG emission reductions, which is also reflected in the federal government's previously stated objective of 30% reduction in nitrogen emissions by 2030. Nitrogen fertilizer is a critical tool for farmers in growing the world's healthiest vegetable oil. Reducing emissions from fertilizer cannot mean simply regulating reductions in fertilizer use. To do so would hinder the competitiveness of the Canadian canola farmer in global markets and their ability to meet the world's needs for a healthy vegetable oil. Rather, our growers need access to nitrogen and other production tools and our objective must be innovating to reduce the emissions from fertilizer use, as well as supporting growers in moving to more precise fertility practices and crediting the grower and industry for sequestering carbon through canola production. The chart here shows that fully 84% of on-farm emissions in canola production come from the use of nitrogen fertilizer. So a focus on nitrogen emissions is not misplaced when it comes to reducing GHG emissions overall. Meeting the world's demands for more canola oil as a healthy food and increasingly also a low carbon fuel, while also reducing emissions from nitrogen fertilizer, will also take investment. The Guelph Statement identifies several other critically important priorities for Canada's agriculture ministers. Market access, market development and trade are essential elements of our export focused sector sector growth and value added processing equally so. To meet these priorities, while also addressing climate change, will require substantial investment by governments. It would be a mistake to reduce funding to market access and promotion, to technology adaptation and to grower agronomic research by shifting existing resources to other challenges. To meet the challenge of climate change, governments will need to increase funding both through the five-year policy framework and through funding programs geared directly to climate change mitigation across government. Recently, the Royal Bank of Canada issued a report highlighting the investment that would be required to meet the government's commitments to GHG emission reduction, including in agriculture. The report says, quote, while some of these GHG reductions can be achieved at a relatively low cost, most will be expensive and require new processes and capital investment." Unquote. The report suggests an investment of 2.5 billion annually would be required to tackle climate change in agriculture. So that brings us back to Canola Week and the focus on the critical research and innovation that's happening in our sector. To repeat an earlier comment, it's hard to overstate the importance of your work. All indications are that our industry will require more canola production to keep up with global demand. At the same time, we need to do so sustainably and contribute to the global effort to reduce GHG emissions. Canola is a great product and a solution provider on the environmental front. Our growers are committed to sustainable production, which is central to the endurance of their farms. As we prepare for the next round of research funding, we've launched a comprehensive analysis to update the innovation strategy for the canola sector. Led by Joanne Booth and Curtis Rempel, the strategy started with a consultation with all Canola Council members in all parts of the value chain. Curtis will speak about it at tomorrow's Canola Discovery Forum, and we look forward to your feedback as important stakeholders in Canola's research and innovation agenda. Programs like the Canola Agronomic Research Program and the canola agri-science cluster are successful because all parts of the value chain have input into where the funding will provide the most benefit. There are so many ways to put research dollars to work and we need your help to make the best investment decisions and be ready with a clear shared vision of where future, in government, future government investment can provide the most benefit. Governments will be making these funding decisions at a time of immense pressure on the public treasury. As we emerge from the pandemic, policy, policymakers will be challenged to restore fin financial stability while also spurring on economic recovery. 
At this critical time, we need to remind governments that canola is poised to continue to drive economic growth and that canola research is an essential investment in Canada's economic future. For example, consider the rapid progress we've made in Black Lake management in just the last few years with better understanding of the durability of resistance genes and the development of a rapid DNA test to identify Black Lake races. Publicly supported research has also taken much of the guesswork out of managing club root, which was unfamiliar to Canadian canola growers just a decade ago. In one important study, researchers found that the most effective way of reducing disease severity and yield loss is to use club root resistance varieties plus crop rotations with at least two years between host crops. Clear evidence-based knowledge like this is essential to managing this new threat. New research is also shedding light on how the environmental footprint of agri agriculture can be reduced, not just for canola production, but also for the larger bioeconomy. For example, a recent study funded by the Canadian Agri-Science Cluster Program has shown that canola meal helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in dairy herds. Researchers found that cows excrete less methane when they consume a diet rich in canola meal. Instead of being lost to the atmosphere, that energy is channeled into the production of more milk. Cows also convert more dietary nitrogen into milk protein, so less nitrogen ends up in cow's urine, where it is more likely to become ammonia or nitrous oxide. Success stories like these will be shared with Ottawa and the provincial governments, and we, re and we will remind them of the importance of supporting canola research. We have no doubt that Canada, canola's economic benefits would not have grown so quickly over the last decade without the advances made possible by our research partnerships. So in summary, this is a time of significant disruption and uncertainty in the Canadian canola sector, but it's also a time when we see great opportunity on the horizon. With continued investments and teamwork and research and innovation, we are confident we can break through the next level of productivity. And we can do it in a way that is truly sustainable and aligned with our market demands. Getting there will require the cooperation of our partners in government as both research partners and policymakers. We'll also need the commitment, ideas, enthusiasm of the entire canola value chain. These strengths are the lifeblood of our sector and have never been more essential than they are right now. So thank you very much for contributing to this coordinated and collaborative approach. I look forward to the meetings that take place this week and to seeing all the things that we can achieve together. Thank you.